planets get connected with each other to multiple methods. This is called a planetary relationship. In this connection, two type of things are primarily seen with. Planets are categorized into two categories. Benefic, malefic, friend, enemy. What is the difference between benefic, malefic and friend, enemy? Let me tell you something. With respect to house analysis, understand it this way. Benefic influencing a house indicates good thing will happen. Malefic influencing a house indicates bad thing will happen. With planets, aspect is more powerful than conjunction. You should understand this point. Why? Because in the four type of relationships, exchange is the most powerful one followed by the aspect of dispositor followed by mutual aspect between four planet, two planets followed by conjunction of two planets. Followed by means the first relationship of exchange is the most powerful one. The last relationship of conjunction of two planets is the least powerful one. But you see in the second and third relationship, the aspect of the planet, the aspect of the Rashi Lord over the planet or the aspect of planets over each other is featuring, which is a clear indication that Rishis are taking aspect to be more powerful than placement or conjunction, not placement, conjunction. So when you talk of a planet, one planet conjoined with the planet, one planet aspecting the planet, more powerful is the aspecting planet. This is one point that you should understand. Coming to house analysis, a benefic planet influences aspects. Benefic result will happen. Good result will happen. Malefic planet is aspecting. Bad result will happen. In the case of marriage, understand that benefic planet will indicate good marriage, malefic planet will indicate bad marriage. But then this benefic planet can be friendly or can be inimical. It can be either ways. For example, seventh house is having a Rashi of Venus and it is aspected by Jupiter. Now, though Jupiter is a benefic planet, but it is inimical to Venus. It is aspecting the Rashi of Venus. It is aspect of an enemy. What difference does it make? Basic point, what I tell, uh, there is a saying, you must have heard it, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Basic point is, benefic planet will expect good result will happen if this benefic planet will be friendly also, the result will happen as per your choice. If this benefic planet is not friendly, result will not be as per your choice. For example, Someone is, someone have a promise of good marriage in their horoscope. Now the seventh house is expected by a friendly benefit planet. One will get a girlfriend, will get married to that girlfriend and his marital life will be good. The benefit planet is expecting, but it is not friendly. In this particular case, person is having a girlfriend. He want to marry to the girlfriend, but he could not marry. Because it is an inimical planet, support will not be there. But because good marriage is promised and it is still a benefic planet, it will indicate marriage will not happen with the girlfriend, but will happen with someone else. And that marriage with someone else will be happy, will be good. This is how it should be understood. Same should be understood with aspect of malefics also. Malefics give bad result. A malefic which is enemy gives more bad result as compared to a malefic who is a friend. For example, the Rashi of Venus is expected by Saturn. Though Saturn is a malefic, it will give misery. But because it is friend of Venus, the misery is coming because the person is, you say, drinking alcohol or spending time with his friends. So the aspect of friendliness here is that he is spending time with his friend. He is enjoying this. This is bringing bad results in marriage. That's another thing. Right? That is malefic aspect working. On the other hand, the Rashi of Venus is influenced by Yusuf's sun, which is inimical to Venus also, which is a malefic planet also. In such situation, marital life is bad because of family pressure. 
Now in family pressure, both the boy and the girl both are suffering and their marital life is also suffering. None of them is enjoying. That's the first basic point that you should understand. Friendly planet, in, friendly planet, inimical planet, good planet, bad planet, there is a difference. And whenever you are going to tell the result, you have to synthesize all of these four factors. Point one. Point number two. It works the same way with respect to aspect. It works the same way with respect to conjunction also. One more small little point I will want to put before I go back to my topic. <clears throat> that is friendship enmity table. Now, what you will see in astrology that friend and enmity is used for Raja Yoga. Whereas benefic and malefic is used for mere good or bad results only. I will give you an example. Tenth house is the house of profession. Benefic is expecting professional life will be very good. That means you don't have to take much tension in your profession. It is okay under control. Very good. Malefic planet is influencing the tenth house. Uh, the professional life is causing you troubles. Some problems with the boss, management of clients, etc. These things will be there. Now, if this planet aspecting either benefic or malefic, if it is a friendly planet to the 10th Lord also, it does not matter 10th Lord is in the 10th house or not. Which planet is in the 10th house, it does not matter. The friend friendship or enmity should be seen with respect to the 10th Lord. If the planet who is aspecting the 10th house, whether be it benefic or malefic, does not matter. Benefic planet have benefic aspect, malefic planet have malefic aspect that you should be very clear about. Now, if the 10th house is aspected by a friendly planet, it will create Raja Yoga also, in which case the person's professional position will be very high. Managerial positions, human managerial positions, IAS, IPS, top of the profession he will be. Whereas if the inimical planet is aspecting whether good or bad does not matter, but it does not produce Raja Yoga. So one more thing is there. The aspect of friend gives Raja Yoga the influence, conjunction included. The influence of friend give Raja Yoga, the influence of enemy does not give Raja Yoga at all. So you take the seventh house once again, for example, if the seventh house is expected by friend of the seventh Lord, marriage will come with Raja Yoga also. That means after marriage, income will increase. There will be promotions in profession. Name, fame, status will increase. If the seventh Lord is expected by inimical planet in that particular scenario, opposite of Raja Yoga will happen. Opposite of Raja Yoga is Duryoga. So penury, financial difficulties, etc. These things will be after marriage. Now you say if more than one planet is expecting, then you say three planets are expecting. Then you will check whether two of them, maximum of them, because here I am taking example of three planets, you will check whether two of them are friendly or inimical, decide based on that. Point one. Secondarily, if only two planets are influencing, one friendly, one enemical, in that particular case, you should decide the strength, which planet is powerful. Result should be told as per the powerful planet. That you will decide Raj Yoga. Friendly planet influencing, it gives Raj Yoga. Inimical planet is influencing, it gives opposite of Raj Yoga. This works for every planet. It, it does not work for 7th house or 10th house only. It works for every house. It works for every planet. It works everywhere in astrology. This is basic. Okay. Now the question. How many types of friendship enmity are there? Is there only one type of friendship enmity is there that we are always using? No. Multiple types of friendship enmity are there in astrology. Right. Long ago, there was a group. The person, admin of the group claimed that he have read complete of astrology, but he could not get answer of some logical questions. 
someone sent me one of his question also his question was when mars and moon are friendly to each other why mars gets debilitated in the rashi of moon i laughed very badly over it i thought to write that if you think there is only one type of friendship enmity that you cannot call yourself an expert of astrology who have read everything and then have not found answers you have not read even a single thing i ever leave the point the only thing that i am saying is before being an expert lot of knowledge is needed and such claims of people that i have read a lot of astrology but i did not find answer of this thing is simply that they have not read it enough but another set of question is if there is more than one type of friendship enmity then what we should do how we will use all of them if they are all the same then it is not different type of and different type if they are not same then when to use which one this is a confusion you people i think you are first time hearing that there are multiple types of friendship and it okay no problem first of all let's understand something this is what i will call north indian friendship enmity this is normal friendship enmity that you know that moon is inimical to none okay normal friendship enmity that you know moon is inimical to no planet how this is decided in the year i think 2020 2021 i first have started talking about it in my courses and now it is very overwhelming to know that other astrologers are also teaching it now they have learnt it very properly it's very good this is the change that i want to make right so this friendship enmity what i am calling north indian friendship enmity that you generally know is based on the mula trikona sign of the planet you can see my screen now it is based on mula trikona sign of planet the mula trikona sign for sun is leo the moon mula trikona sign for moon is taurus for mars it is aries for mercury it is virgo for jupiter it is sagittarius for venus it is libra and for saturn it is aquarius i am not talking of mula trikona rashi of rahu and ketu maybe you are just wanting to comment that sir rahu becomes mula trikona in this rashi but i am not telling this this means you know more astrology sir i know less astrology sir pardon me thank you come back to the point basic concept is make a horoscope from mula trikona rashi of planet okay for sun make a horoscope from leo ascendant okay i have made it right in front of you now the planet who is owning remember planet who is owning third house sixth house seventh house tenth house and eleventh house from the mula trikona rashi of sun will be inimical to sun the one who is owning remaining house will be friendly to sun the one who is owning one friendly house and one inimical house will be neutral to sun simply put for sun now you see both the rashis of venus libra and taurus are coming into those houses where i have marked a cross so sun is inimical towards venus both the rashi of saturn is also coming into cross rashi sun is also inimical to saturn one rashi of mercury is coming into the inimical houses one rashi is coming into friendly houses so mercury is neutral to sun remaining both the rashis of mars are coming into friendly signs so mars is friendly to sun 
both of the rashi of jupiter is coming into friendly houses so jupiter is also friendly to sun and moon owns only one rashi which is coming in friendly how friendly house from the mulatrikona rashi of sun so moon is also friendly to sun in this matter normal friendship enmity is decided right in this particular method itself now there is a lot of confusion here also people generally don't pay much attention to it thing you have already known now right which planet is friendly inimical to whom we have done a list for sun now let's try doing a list for moon for moon mool trikon rashi is taurus okay now you see friend enemy neutral what i told you third rashi seventh rashi eighth rashi tenth rashi eleventh rashi from the mool trikon rashi of moon will be inimical one rashi of venus is coming another rashi of venus is not coming in inimical rashi so venus is neutral one rashi of mars is coming another rashi of mars is not coming so mars is also neutral one rashi of saturn is coming another rashi of saturn is not coming so saturn is also neutral one rashi of jupiter is coming another rashi of jupiter is not coming so jupiter is also neutral the rashi in the third house is the rashi of moon itself moon cannot be inimical to moon so moon is having no enemy other than that rashi of sun comes in friendly house only so sun right both the rashis of mercury comes in friendly house so mercury are friendly to moon basically put sun and mercury are friendly to moon venus mars saturn jupiter are inimical to moon and there is no enemy for me now generally whenever you see about talk, whenever you listen about friendship enmity you may take you may have heard that saturn and venus are inimical to moon this is very partially true this is not completely true this is another type of friendship enmity that you are knowing right it's not correct as such we will i will come to it also don't worry now after moon let's come to mars the mool trikon rashi of mars falls in aries right rashi in third house sixth house seventh house tenth house and eleventh house are inimical both the rashis of mercury are coming in inimical rashi so mercury is an enemy to mars one rashi of venus is coming in inimical another is coming in friendly so venus is neutral to mars both the rashi of saturn are coming into inimical house also so saturn is also inimical to mars other planets will be friendly because neutral we have already decided inimical also we have already decided others will be friend the only rashi of moon is coming into friendly house so moon is a friend only rashi of sun is coming into friendly house sun is a friend both the rashis of jupiter are coming into friendly houses jupiter is a friend so for mars friend is moon sun and jupiter neutral is venus enemy is mercury saturn right now what about mercury so let's do mercury first let's do mercury the mool trikon of mercury falls into virgo right 
थर्ड हाउस सिक्स हाउस सेवेंथ हाउस टेंथ हाउस इलेवेंथ हाउस आर इनिमिकल द ओनली राशि ऑफ मून इज कमिंग इन टू इनिमिकल हाउस सो मून इज इनिमिकल right in in the 10th house the rashi of mercury itself is coming mercury cannot be inimical to mercury itself to so leave the point one rashi of jupiter is coming in inimical house another is coming into friendly house so jupiter at best can be neutral one rashi of saturn is coming in inimical house one rashi of saturn is coming in friendly house so saturn is also neutral see remember up to this extent you may have heard that mercury is friendly to Saturn. This is not reality. I have told you the principle very clearly, right? One Rashi of Mars is coming in inimical house. Another Rashi of Mars is coming in friendly house. So Mars is also neutral to Mercury. Only planet inimical to Mercury is Moon. Remaining planet, both the houses of Venus comes in friendly house. So Venus is friendly. and the sun is also coming into a friendly house so sun is also friendly sun venus are friendly to mercury moon is inimical to mercury jupiter saturn mars are neutral to mercury that's the basic point now after mercury our next resort is jupiter now you know jupiter gets mool trikon in sagittarius now when you make a horoscope from sagittarius friend enemy neutral third house sixth house seventh house tenth house eleventh house will be inimical third lord is saturn but saturn is another lord of second house which is friendly so saturn is neutral venus both rashis are coming into new animal house so venus is inimical mercury both rashis coming into inimical house so mercury is also enemy other planets the only rashi of sun is coming into ninth house sun is friend only rashi of moon is coming into eighth house moon is friend both the rashis of mars are coming into friendly houses mars is also friend so for jupiter sun moon mars are friend venus mercury are enemy saturn is neutral basic point now after jupiter is venus venus gets moon trikon in libra so let's calculate it from libra third house sixth house seventh house tenth house eleventh house is inimical one rashi of jupiter is coming in inimical house another rashi of jupiter is also coming into inimical house so jupiter is enemy one rashi of mars is coming into inimical house another in friendly house mars is neutral one rashi of moon and one rashi of sun is also coming into inimical house so sun and moon are also inimical to venus remaining both the rashis of saturn are coming into friendly house so saturn is friendly to venus and both the rashis of mercury are also coming into friendly house so mercury is also friendly to venus saturn mercury are friendly to venus jupiter sun moon are inimical to venus mars is neutral to venus lastly saturn saturn gets his mool trikon in aquarius rashi so let's make a horoscope from aquarius as a now what is the basic point third house sixth house Seventh house, tenth house, eleventh house will be inimical. Third house, Rashi of Mars, another Rashi of Mars in tenth house, so Mars becomes inimical. 
राशि ऑफ मून एंड राशि ऑफ सन आर बोथ कमिंग इन टू इनिमिकल हाउस तो सन एंड मून आर ऑल्सो इनिमिकल वन राशि ऑफ जुपिटर इज कमिंग इन टू न्यूट्रल हाउस अनादर इन टू बैड हाउस अनादर राशि ऑफ जुपिटर इज कमिंग इन टू गुड हाउस जुपिटर बिकम्स न्यूट्रल both the rashis of venus are coming into friendly house so venus is friendly both the rashis of mercury are coming into friendly house mercury is also friendly so for saturn venus and mercury are friendly mars sun moon are inimical jupiter is neutral this is happening for saturn now is the principle very clear from the mula trikon rashi of the planet Rashi is falling in third, sixth, seventh, tenth, and eleventh house are inimical. The planet whose one Rashi is falling into inimical house, another Rashi is falling into non-inimical house. That is neutral. Remaining other planets, because their both Rashi will fall into non-inimical houses, they will be friendly. Right. This is friendship and enmity number one, most popular, most accepted. What I will call North Indian. there is one more method rather simpler this is based on grouping now this grouping is based on some formula i don't know this is based on logic so rather than being based on formula this is based on logic the logic goes that sun is the king moon is the queen jupiter is the minister and mars is the commander in chief these planets are friendly to each other on the other hand another group is ruled by saturn where venus becomes the queen and the minister both and mercury becomes the army personnel in the saturn list some people include rahu also if you are including rahu in the saturn list then you should add ketu in the sun list what this table is telling you that sun moon jupiter mars are friendly towards each other saturn venus mercury are friendly towards each other and they are inimical towards another group so sun moon jupiter mars ketu are friendly towards each other they are inimical to saturn rahu venus mercury Saturn, Rahu, Venus, Mercury are friendly towards each other and inimical towards Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mars, and Ketu. This is the basic setup, and this is based on the planetary cabinet. In one system, Sun is the king; in another system, Saturn is the king. In one system, Moon is Moon is queen, and Jupiter is uh, the advisor. In second system, uh, Venus is the queen and advisor both. in one system mars becomes the commander in chief in another system mercury becomes commander in chief and army in one system ketu becomes the army in another system rahu becomes the army this is based on logic this i will call logic based friendship enmity and lastly there is a list of friendship enmity that you can see in front of your eyes now according to the, this list sun is only friendly to jupiter is inimical to moon mars mercury venus and saturn moon is only friendly to jupiter mercury and is inimical to sun mars venus and saturn mars is friendly towards venus mercury inimical towards sun moon jupiter and saturn mercury is friendly towards moon mars jupiter venus and saturn inimical towards sun Jupiter is friendly towards Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, inimical towards Mars. Venus is friendly towards Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, inimical towards Sun and Moon. And Saturn is having friendship with Mercury, Jupiter, Venus is inimical towards Sun, Moon and Mars. This I will refer as South Indian friendship. what is the uses up up to this much level you people will remember right remaining thing i will talk in match making many people nowadays say you know match making does not work this that 
this is coming because of lack of experience i believe that if our sages have said something it works and i have found it working in my experience also in matchmaking there is a point for if the lagna lord of the boy and the girl are friendly towards each other or not in this scenario which friendship enmity should be used south indian friendship enmity should be used the irony is that north indian friendship enmity is being used point are being given based on that and the result is in indian society divorce rates are increasing day by day sometime people also start saying after their failure of proper matching they say that match making do not work we got two people married with proper match making proper gun milan but their marriage is not working fine hence match making does not work point 1 gun milan is not only match making point number 2 in gun milan also what type of friendship enmity should be used people don't know it how do i know it because it is very clear if you read in the parampara you will know that south indian friendship enmity should be used right this is very clearly written between the lines itself not explicitly written written between the lines a careful discerning reader will be able to know it and i have tested it over thousands of successful over thousands of horoscope whose match making i have done in more than 13 years so far and their marital life is good even after 10 15 years of their marriage right one secondarily we talk of planet to planet relationship one planet is expecting another planet one planet is conjoined with another planet and this is a friendly conjunction or not people don't know the difference people don't know what to predict with this but that i have told you with friendly connection friendly aspect friendly conjunction predict raji yog and the desirous result the result that you desire inimical conjunction inimical aspect lack of raj yoga instead bad yoga dur yoga and the result that is happening is not according to your wish whereas in the other hand you are being forced to do something this is one now in this table when you say sun and venus are with each other sun and venus are conjoined together whether it is a friendly conjunction or not what i am referring to as planet to planet connection south indian friendship enmity should be used clear now what i referred to as north indian friendship enmity if you have seen the calculation carefully it was based on rashi now there is also a question how does a planet give result in rashi a planet in friendly rashi will give raj yog one will give result as per your desire planet in inimical rashi will be weak planet in friendly rashi will be powerful also planet in inimical rashi will be weak it will not produce raj yog and it will not give result as per your desire i have given you an example of desire with respect to girlfriend or boyfriend the person you are desirous to marry off now in this particular scenario whether the planet is situated in friendly rashi or not what i have referred as north indian friendship should be used because it is based on rashi's point number 1 point number 2 there is a normal problem no if you go by north indian friendship enmity you will say that mercury is neutral to sun now what does it mean neutral when you go into relationship you say you do a relationship matching if planets are friendly you will say matching is good if the lagna lord is inimical you will say matching is not good what is neutral by marital life can be either good or marital life can be either bad it cannot be neutral neutral is a wrong concept according to me neutral is a very wrong concept in match making and in practically also you cannot say that these two planets are conjoined and because they are neutral see it will not be that they are neutral to each other this will not be the case for mercury sun will be friendly for sun mercury will be neutral so sun mercury conjunction sun is with a neutral planet mercury is with a friendly planet how can this happen this cannot happen so neutral is not same point number 
secondarily you cannot say that because the planet is neutral no result will happen because it should imply that mercury uh, and uh, mercury and sun are conjoined and no result is happening then why the conjunction is happening a conjunction a yoga is happening without any result this is not how the astrology works right so according to me this north indian friendship enmity that i have referred to does not work that particular way it is for rashi only if you remember the table for sun leo ascendant the rashi gemini was going into 11th house that was inimical house the rashi virgo was going into second house which was a friendly house simply put north indian friendship enmity should be used for the purpose that sun is bad in gemini good in virgo in virgo sun should be considered as being in a friendly rashi in gemini sun should be considered as being in a inimical rashi right so north indian friendship enmity should be used to find the relationship of planet with the rashi whether the relationship is friendly or not and this whether the planet is going into friendly rashi or inimical rashi should not only be checked in d1 but should be checked in every divisional charts free to do north indian friendship you should use lastly what i called you as categorization based friendship enmity you know sun moon mars jupiter Ra ketu are friendly towards each other and they are inimical towards group 2 which consists of saturn venus mercury rahu who are friendly towards each other but inimical towards set one this friendship enmity according to me should be used in transit this friendship enmity according to me should be used in non astrological things <coughs> sorry what do i mean by non astrological things number 1 what do i mean by transit what is the difference between transit transit is generally not seen as a normal divisional chart in normal divisional chart sorry transit is not seen as a normal horoscope because in normal horoscope divisional charts become very important in transit the divisional placement of planet will be for very low period it cannot be used to time event right so in transit etc this grouping based friendship enmity should be used where it gives good result so when you are saying that saturn is going saturn is transiting over an inimical planet so you are facing challenges with respect to the house which is owned by saturn or saturn is the car cover profession so because saturn is transiting over a inimical planet or a inimical planet is transiting over saturn that's why you are getting problem in your professional life in this matter the grouping based friendship enmity you will have to use secondarily what happens for example astrologically you have to find which day is good for you which day is bad for you what is the principle principle is the planet friendly to lagna lord the week day of that planet is beneficial the planet inimical to lagna lord the week day of that planet is not beneficial now in this particular case it is not told that check every planet if the planet is good in horoscope his week day is good if the planet is bad in horoscope his week day is bad this is not told so here when you are saying that planet friendly to lagna lord their week days their hora their year their month is also good here to find the planet which is friendly or inimical to lagna lord you will use grouping or categorization based friendship and enmity which i have taught you at the second step right so these are the three types of friendship and enmity in astrology all three of these are mentioned by sages mentioned by classics but their uses was not clear at all i have done my researches have found their uses and have tested them over thousands of horoscopes over the years and today thought to share it with you <clears throat> 